When you think of long-range quadcopters, you might not think of something like the Flywheel Explorer LR. You might think of a great big quadcopter with massive batteries so it can fly for a long time, and then you need massive props to lift the massive batteries and a great big frame, and you end up with this giant industrial monster. But you can also make a quadcopter fly for a long time by making it smaller and lighter. And that's what Flywoo have done in partnership with Dave C, is actually the designer of this Fly was the manufacturer. And Dave C designs small, lightweight, long-range quadcopters like the Flywoo Explorer LR. Flywoo advertises that the Explorer LR, when combined with this 4-cell 18650 battery can fly for up to 30 minutes. We're going to see how much flight time we get in this video. And if you're wondering why the hell would you want to fly for 30 minutes? Well, the answer to that question is usually because you want to fly a long distance. And in order to fly a long distance, you have to stay in the air for a long time. Speaking of flying for a long time, the DJI 03 air unit has been tested out to a range of more than 20 kilometers on the stock antennas. In theory, it could go a little further if you were to put aftermarket high gain antennas on the goggles too. There certainly are people out there who won't think very much of 20 kilometers and they would say that's not even really long range, but that certainly is farther than most people watching this video are probably gonna wanna fly and is a pretty impressive number for a quadcopter of this size. Having a video link that can go out past 20 kilometers isn't very useful if your control link can't keep up. If you have the DJI FPV controller V2, then you can bind it directly to the O3 air unit in the quad and you don't need to choose any other control link. If you want to use a third-party controller like this RadioMaster Boxer, you can order the quadcopter with a Express LRS receiver, a Crossfire receiver, or a FlySky receiver. Of those three, I would suggest you stay away from the FlySky unless you absolutely have to, because FlySky is an older control protocol that only has about one to two kilometers of usable range in real world conditions, whereas Express LRS and Crossfire can both go way past the 20 kilometer video link. So basically your video link will be the only restriction on your usable range. The flight controller is the Flywoo Goku F405. We're not going to get a great look at it here in this video because it's mounted in the frame. F405 processor is more than acceptable to run anything that Betaflight can do today. Uh, it's not the fastest, the latest, and the greatest, but it's pretty common to see it used today to try to keep the price of the flight controller down. And it isn't a real restriction uh, on anything that you're probably going to want to do. The ESC is an 8-bit BLHeli S ESC. Again, this is a cost-saving measure. Uh, BLHeli 32 ESC would be higher performance, but also somewhat more expensive. And again, especially on a long-distance quad like this, where you're not really trying to push the motors in like an acro or racing quad, BLHeli S is gonna be more than acceptable. As has always been the case on the Flywheel Explorer line, the motors are 1404 in size and 2750 kV. These are Dave C signature motors developed by Flywheel in participation with Dave C. They're, they're smaller, they're, so they're paired with a four inch prop. Uh, and that's a pretty small motor for a four inch prop if you were trying to do freestyle or racing or really aggressive stuff. For a long distance cruiser where the responsiveness of the props isn't as big of a deal, the smaller motor helps keep the weight down and helps give longer flight times. The O3 version of the Explorer LR has Flywo's new V3 GPS units on it. The difference between these GPS units and the ones that came before them is that these have the M10 chipset on them and the older ones had the M8 chipset. And the, the short version of the story is that the M10 chipset is much better at locking in satellites. You can get up to 30 satellites locked maximum with this chipset. And I've heard reports of people even being inside an apartment and still being able to get satellites locked, whereas that's just really unheard of with the M8. This is a problem that has really plagued Basically, everybody who is self-building small, compact quadcopters with GPSs on them. Small quadcopters, the electronics are clustered closer together. You can't just take the GPS unit and like put it up on a stock or a boom arm like some larger quadcopters do. And people have really struggled to get good GPS performance out of these quadcopters. A lot of times you take forever to lock satellites and when they do lock, you'll get five or six satellites, which really isn't enough to have really good, precise 
uh, positioning. Uh, the hope is, and we're going to test this in this video, that these new uh, GPS units will have much faster lock and lock many more satellites and just generally work better. Flywheel's put a lot of thoughtful touches into this build. For example, there is a cover here over the flight controller. And my guess is that the intent of that cover is that when we pass the battery strap through this slit, the battery strap is oftentimes moving around and it can sort of pull and wear on the, mo on the wires going to the flight controller. We can also get situations where something touching these wires or touching the flight controller causes problems with the gyro. My guess is that by covering these wires up, we're just helping keep them out of the way and protect them from damage. It's a really nice touch. Also, if we look under the O3 air unit, that copper color there, that is the wire going to the GPS receiver. And some people have found that GPS receivers function better when the wire is shielded like this. There's some debate as to whether that should work or not, but some people have observed it and think it may, does a better job and Flywheel have taken the time to shield that wire. The frame is designed by Dave C to be as light as possible while still giving good flight characteristics. Notice that durability is not that high on the list when it comes to design criteria. This is not a frame that you're gonna to wanna to just smash into the wall a million times while you try to do a freestyle trick. These little spindly arms will break. Uh, this is a frame that is designed to be a long range cruiser and not a hardcore crasher. One example of that design intent is the geometry of the arms. You notice they're not an X, they're in what's called a dead cat style. Dead cat means, why do they call it dead cat? I'll tell you in a second. Dead cat means that the front arms go straight out instead of going forward in an X. And the intent of that is to keep the props out of view of the camera while you're flying. The reason they call it a dead cat is that the very first example of this geometry is a person who taxidermied his pet after it died and turned it into a quadcopter and that was the sh shape of the cat's arms. And so now we call it a dead cat frame. It's kind of morbid, but also kind of hilarious. <laughs> One of the problems you can run into when flying at longer distances is that when you crash, you may not easily be able to find the quadcopter where you crashed. Uh, Flywheel have dealt with that with this self-powered buzzer. The way it works is that when you plug the quadcopter in, uh, first of all, the buzzer is pretty loud uh, and then it, it can act as a normal buzzer, like when you push a button on your controller, you can make it beep. But then when the battery unplugs, like for example, if you crashed and ejected your battery and now the quad is just sitting there somewhere in a tree or a bush and you have no way of activating it to find out where it is, when the battery comes unplugged, this light will begin blinking. And in about 30 seconds, it will begin beeping. And it will keep beeping until the battery wears out. It has a very small, little uh, one cell lipo in here that's charged up from your from your battery and it will just keep beeping until that battery runs out for several hours at least. What that means is that every time you unplug the quadcopter you need to come in here and there's a button and you push this button. It's kind of hard to push the button without some tool. And then it'll start beeping if you don't push the button. I don't know why it's so hard to... There we go. Oh no I didn't get it. I need a tool. How long do I have to push it for? I think that got it. The problem seems to be that the button is really close to the edge of this 3D printed carrier. And so when you push down on the button, you're really just pushing down on this wall of the carrier. And I just can't get the button to depress simply by pushing it with my finger. That's pretty annoying. Some self-powered buzzers will have a thing that if you like plug and unplug it quickly, then it turns itself off, this one doesn't seem to have that. So I would keep something nearby to push the button with every time I unplug the damn thing. It's a little bit frustrating. Now it's time to fly this. And uh, since I'm gonna try to run out the 30 minute quote unquote advertised time on this battery, I may as well just get it in the air and talk to you guys while I fly. Yeah, I have no satellites. So uh, we'll go ahead and fly though. We may land once we get satellite. Oh, there they go. They're coming. They're thinking about coming. Uh, so yeah, we are flying with the 3000 milliamp hour lithium ion battery. This is the Flywoo branded one, but obviously there's more out there. Uh, and they advertise up to, quote unquote, up to a 30 minute flight time. I think that up to maybe doing a little bit of heavy lifting, but uh, we're gonna see what kind of flight time we get. And 
I am going to do some throttle punches and stuff and just see how responsive it is, but we're going to try and fly it realistically like a long distance cruiser would fly. So let's just get a throttle punch here. There's full throttle. Okay, so this is not a freestyle. I mean, obviously, you know, with the, with the right intent and skill, you can freestyle just about anything, but uh, that's uh, not what this is intended for. Uh, let's wait till we get some satellites locked before we start doing any longer range stuff. All right, now we've got some satellites locked. Uh, we've been going for about five minutes before it started getting satellites locked. That's pretty reasonable for a, an initial power-up, but not as fast as some people have reported. The big advantage of the uh, M10 chip in this GPS unit compared to the M8 chip in previous units is that the M10 can chip can bring in up to four of the global navigation system uh, s at the same time. And uh, that helps it like get a faster lock and get, get more satellites locked. Uh, I'm not seeing the kind of radical improvement in GPS performance that I had hoped for. Like locking eight or seven or eight sats is pretty normal for, oh, here's nine. Maybe we'll get some more. We'll see how many we get by the end. But locking seven or eight sats is pretty normal for, uh, for an M8 chip. So, eh, well, anyway. Well, th these small long range rigs definitely suffer when flying in the wind. Um, a larger quadcopter would have more ability to resist being pushed around by the wind. We can definitely see this thing jumping around a little bit, especially we get, where we get into the air around that ridge. Um, uh, and I think that if you're flying a small rig like this, you probably are more interested in kind of the fun of the experience than getting extraordinarily good uh, footage. Um, with some stabilization, though, uh, we could probably clean this up. The O3 does work with Gyroflow. And it also has built-in stabilization, which I've got turned off at this exact moment because I want you guys to see every little bump. We've got 12 minutes in the air, and we are at 3.4 volts. And that might make you think it's getting to be time to land. But this is a lithium-ion battery, not a lithium polymer. And they can go down to 2.5 volts as their absolute minimum, whereas a LiPo is 3.0 volts. What that means is that the, the actual sort of usable voltage of this battery is as low as maybe 3.0. In other words, we've got a lot of flight time left at 3.4 volts on the battery. I always get bad SNR when I fly over this way. And some, once, oh, oh, golly. We have 19 satellites. Wow. That's impressive. That's impressive. 19 satellites is gosh dang impressive. So then, does that mean our return to home is more accurate? Flywheel ships this quad with Betaflight 4.3.1 on it, which is fine, but Betaflight 4.4 has significantly improved the GPS rescue functionality where it will actually try to land instead of just flying home and crashing. They have a 4.4 CLI dump for it, and I have instructions for how to upgrade it in my setup guide for this quadcopter. I'll put a link to that in the video description if you want to check it out. Even if you already know how to set up the quad, you might want to go check out the section where I show how to upgrade it to 4.4 for because it's totally worth it. But how good, how good is the return to home? So I'm gonna fly it out here. We need to be at least 100 meters from the home point in order to activate GPS rescue. Here we go, three, two, one. Let's see what happens. Uh, where are you going? Where are you going? Why did you turn that way? Which direction is home? Home is straight ahead. 150 meters straight ahead. What are you doing? It is descending. I'm walking out of the way. Where the hell is it? It's a little confused. It's pretty damn close. Oh, well, it didn't exactly touch down, but it was pretty close to the home point. 
We broke, oh my God, we broke an arm. We broke an arm. Hallelujah. We broke an arm. Alrighty, well, we're done here. So we gotta address a couple things from that flight. First, what I wanna address is, uh, earlier in the video I told you that the DJI 03 had been tested to 20 plus kilometers. But I was getting low signal warnings at 400 or 500 meters. The 20 kilometer run was done under ideal conditions. And ideal conditions for long range flying includes flying high up in the air and with no obstacles between you and the aircraft. Well, obviously we're not in that situation. We've got trees, we've got so on, and we have to respect the uh, altitude limits that prevent us from having the optimal link. So the real world link is gonna be somewhat less than that, and oftentimes substantially less than that when things are in the way. Nevertheless, the, the O3 performs extremely well when in identical conditions to other video links that are out there. In fact, I would say the O3 performs better than just about any other video link available. The DJI V2 system, the Walksnail system, the HD0 system certainly, and, and mostly analog systems, although if an analog system had enough output power, you can, you can crank the output power of an analog system ridiculously high with amplifiers and you could potentially beat anything. But uh, in general, I think the O3 really stands up. But I do want to explain why I was getting any link warning at all when I was nowhere near that 20 kilometer limit. Betaflight GPS rescue. Well, uh, well, I'm not sure exactly what happened there. It seemed to have a little bit of trouble getting home. It kind of went, uh, 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 uh. And maybe there was some crosswind or you know, headwind that was making it have to struggle. And there are parameters in Betaflight GPS Rescue that you can tune. It's possible that the default parameters are tuned for uh, a five inch quad with a lot more power than this. And that a uh, little four inch like this needs some tuning. It would suggest that Flywoo had not done that tuning on their Betaflight 4.4 CLI or that the tuning was not very effective. Seems like there's some room for improvement there, although I won't be doing that because mine is broken now. Um, <clears throat> if you do have beta flight GPS rescue, don't rely on it to auto land because sometimes it will and obviously sometimes it won't. And then if it disarms 15 feet in the air, that's it for your quad. I will say that the broken arm probably relates a lot to this a heavy battery that I was running, that if I had been using a lighter battery with more of a sort of a performancey freestyle intent, then it might not have broken, but obviously this is the battery that you want for a long range cruiser, so you know, it is what it is. I just looked over in the kit of accessories to see if they provide a spare arm, and instead what I found was this. These are two uh, struts that you can install between the front and the back arm. It adds a tiny bit of weight, but it adds a little bit of strength. And maybe if I had put those on before I went and flew, I uh, wouldn't have broken this arm, but I wasn't intending to crash it, so. Nope, no spare arms over there. What about my claim at the beginning of this video that the O3 is a game changer for sub 250 gram quads? I think this video pretty much confirms that. The footage that we saw isn't as good as what a GoPro would have given us. In fact, maybe it'd be good to do like a head by head to head between the O3 and a GoPro to see which situations the O3 is good and which ones the GoPro does stuff the O3 can't. But I think for most people watching this, the footage that you saw is more than good enough and way better that way than what you get from a typical FPV system that is recording the goggle feed only. Uh, if the O3 has any weakness, I guess it's the camera. We can see a little scuff here from our crash and people I know who switched to running the O3 as their main FPV system say that the lens gets scratched up really easily. This is more of an issue for a freestyle quad where you're going to be doing a lot of turtle mode and you're going to be kicking dust into the lens and so forth. I think it's less of an issue for sort of a long range cruiser like this that isn't going to see as much abuse. If you do end up damaging this, pretty much the only option is to buy a whole new camera. It sucks that you can't get a spare lens. It's worth pointing out, Flywoo makes some ND filters for this that go on the front and that might help protect the lens. I'll put a link to those in the video description if you want to check them out. I haven't used them, but uh, maybe they're worth a look. I'm looking over there to see if they sent, I don't think they sent them to me. Overall though, I'm really excited at the potential of the O3 to make it possible to get better footage than you ever could before from a quadcopter of this weight without having to have an additional camera on board. It's pretty freaking exciting. 
But if you are going to be picking up the O3, the next question that you're probably going to ask yourself is, what goggles should I get to go with it? The Goggles 2 used to be the only choice, but DJI recently released the DJI Goggles Integra, which is $150 cheaper than the Goggles 2, but has a few things left out. But do you really care about those things? If you want to find out more about that, I'll put a card on screen to my video about the DJI Goggles Integra, and I'll put a link in the video description if you're unable to see the card for some reason. See you there.